buggy beta emphasis on buggy uh don't use for your main projects uh 0.6.x will still be a stable ranch for a bit uh okay so let's go ahead and go over buggy beta uh basically every feature that has been that would have been added to meerkat got added to this uh since it has a lot better uh API and under uh, underwriting code. So uh, I switched over to AUI a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to stay in, but you can move these little windows around uh, and then they have different little aspects. So they dock and then they uh, float or whatever you need them to do. Uh, they're kind of standardish modern UI. Uh, I'm going to close this thing down and it will never come back. And I'll put this over here so it's not too weird and confusing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, zoom out. Let's go ahead and shrink this guy. This edge is a little bit of a pain. Yeah. No, you're only supposed to do that in Linux. Okay, uh, so let's say we say apply gravy, and then it goes crash. Now, uh it will say crash detected send log good news you can send this log uh so if you send this log to us uh we can figure out why it crashed uh if not there's the github will have an open issue discussion on 0 0.7.0 buggy beta so uh there's that so you send it and then hey we got your message thank you Okay, and so let's do a couple little quick things. Let me go ahead and delete this. Okay, uh, a lot of the internal stuff that you'll note uh, is in terminal, uh, which you won't really note because it's not really up. Okay, uh, let's go terminal. Okay, uh, so if we type in help in terminal, it gives a bunch of help. Uh, this is uh, all the different little commands that are in it. So if we do uh, help rectangle, it'll say uh, this is what rectangle does. It takes an X position, a Y position in length uh, and in width and et cetera. So you can do rect, let's go ahead and put it at uh, 33 centimeters, four centimeters. And let's say we make it uh, one inch by one inch. And then we do this. Uh, we can also string these together a little bit. So if we do uh, that same rec command, and then we do fill blue, and then uh, grid three four or three five, it will do nothing. The grid didn't span there. But if we do, does uh, fill blue work? No. Okay. Uh, but theory fill blue grid three four there we go uh some of these will chain together they'll explain it and help a little bit so help uh fill uh fill takes in none or elements uh help rect rect spits out path okay that's why it wasn't chaining together so you see this output here okay uh it's a lot of uh, internal stuff like that. These are really easy to add now. So if you needed any uh, sort of specialty whatever stuff, uh, it will give you information on them, etc. Uh, I don't know if I ever covered it in the normal run, but if you do uh, Wasad keys, you can control the laser. So I'm using W S uh, A S D W. It was actually present in 0 dot, uh, 6 dot whatever as well, but I never actually covered it. All right, uh, another thing we can do is uh, this was uh, tabled in 0 dot 6 a while back. Okay, so Ruida server, and if we do spool, this will uh, do a launch the Ruida data server and Ruida jog server. There's an Android uh, app that you use to control your Ruida laser, and it runs on that port. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, load up RDWorks. You'll see the uh, text window fill with the uh, startup code in RDWorks. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and 
make thunder laser smaller okay so it's saying that it has an rd uh uh ruida device even though it's really just my uh normal stock k40 so let's go ahead and do rd works transfer sure let's draw a little rectangle around this uh these will both be cut okay and then we hit start and then it will transfer uh let's go ahead and do this now it's transferring over here you don't have to have the terminal up all the time and uh you'll see over here it's cutting uh it says rd works transfer uh and it's drew the outside edge so you'll notice that in rd works uh this is my same uh bed size so if i take the same thing and i move it down here to the bottom corner and i say start it will uh transfer the item again and then run it down here in the corner and since i have it in spool mode it will uh automatically uh send it straight into the spooler. So the, it takes the RD works code, calls the RD works code cut code, and then uh, that works like that. So let's uh, go over what cut code is. Uh, basically, I needed a sort of middle language. Uh, you'll notice in here, you have to hit uh, copy, you have to hit this button eight zillion times, but uh, basically they're individual steps and I haven't quite mapped them all out yet. So. We copy, this does this this engrave and this engrave. Uh, Preprocess commands, so this is anything we have in here, automatic, uh, before, after, so we threw in a return, it would have been added at that stage. Uh, validate, uh, will run any little commands over here. So uh, if we had an image and it had to convert it to uh, like actualize the image or convert a raster into an image, it would have done it at that step. And then uh, blob turns it into cut code. Uh, basically, uh, operations themselves are a planned operation for the laser that you have put elements in. And then when you hit the, uh, and then what you're doing is you're converting them into uh, cut code, which are individual cuts, uh, each with settings on them. So it's like a cut with a speed. And so it has 262. So all of these items there, uh, pre-process optimizations, this loads up the optimizations for like optimized travel, because since we just have the individual cuts, we can actually plan out uh, what we're doing with the cuts and minimize the travel between them. Please note, this does absolutely nothing in this version currently. Uh, it's planned to be fixed later. So we apply that and then we uh, send this to the spooler. And then you'll notice that this little reticule is jumping around. Please note, this isn't the right speed, the right reticule, which is how it worked before. If we load up controller and we note that I turned off the limit buffer, this is the buffer going through. And what it's doing is it's processing this code directly from the buffer. So it's sending the buffer and then it has an interpreter in the back end. So if this uh, little red uh, circle gets way off course, which it might because it's buggy, Again, buggy beta, uh, don't worry about it, uh, but uh, worry if it messes up the laser, that's a much more critical bug. But if you say loaded up the uh, buffer control and then you did an import of an EGV from like a whisper or something, it would start running it, but it would also still uh, run the sort of simulation of the location that the laser kind of believes it to be at, although it's not quite the, uh, same thing so if you shifted it to the right it wouldn't really uh work the same way it has a different home thing it it's it's a little bit weird but uh that's uh perfectly good uh spooler this didn't load up when i clicked it because i told her turned it off uh this basically has uh the same sort of stuff as before has a bunch of these things that aren't doing anything and probably uh may or may not be turned off uh, depending on how things go. Uh, there's another thing that's uh, hard to show you in this is uh, plugins. Uh, plugins are now possible in 0.7.0. .0. Uh, you'd use a pip and you'd install the plugin and then it has a hook to uh, meerkat.plugin uh, in the entry points. Uh, don't worry too much about it, but if you're a programmer, it's really cool that you could uh, add stuff to the... Uh, code all right uh let me show you camera now 
Okay, uh, camera, there is multi-cameras now. So say I go to camera one. This loads up camera one, which is set to my, uh, my actual webcam, which is just sort of laying on its side uh, as a quirky thing. I'm gonna go ahead and I set this perspective. It will flip that over and then show you it upright. So if you mount your camera upside down, you can just fix it with a perspective uh, that also exists in 0 0.6 or whatever. Didn't go over it too hard. Okay, now, but the important-ish change here is that I also have cameras windows here that aren't related. So I had this setting here, and this is my webcam. So it was uh, camera USB zero. And now I have this camera here, which is a completely different camera, which is set to uh, set URI. Uh, this is a little bit buggy. It uh, keeps deleting the setting, but it's a uh, web, it's a, a HTTP or RTSP uh, camera somewhere else. So you can have multiple cameras and they will both uh, work simultaneously. Uh, let me go here, load it up. Okay, and see this one's moving and this one's moving. So uh, if I say, let me export a snapshot and let's go ahead and export a snapshot. And then uh, it doesn't actually care where they're from. It loaded up one, we're loaded up the other. I'd have done the background, but uh, it, I'm not sure if I can delete it properly. Okay, uh, but yeah, so cameras, plugins, uh, Ruida server works, kind of. I haven't tested it, and I certainly haven't tested it on Lightburn because I don't have a copy of Lightburn, but it works a little bit with RDWorks, so it's kind of hopeful. I don't think I've actually run it on a laser, so again, gingerly, because uh, again, Buggy beta. All right. Uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, and there'll be an open thing on the uh, GitHub. Uh, you could probably comment on the uh, Facebook thing if I post this on Facebook. Uh, all right. Uh, please uh, provide some feedback. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching.